Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I am very excited. I'm joined by Blake Johnston, the um, CEO and founder of Outbound View. And we are here to talk about uh, one of the different offerings that they provide that uh, gets you three times the conversion rates of cold meetings. That's what really hooked me in to talk about this with Blake today. So, um, Blake, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, and um, start this conversation off. I'm excited to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, absolutely. We can get really tactical with this. So, yeah, to introduce myself, uh, Blake Johnston, founder and CEO of Outbound View. I mean, we really focus on everything top of funnel lead gen, but most of that is inside sales related, whether it's data cleansing or outsource sales development or inside sales training and consulting. And yeah, to to your point, we've been uh, obviously in the cold outbound space for a while. Uh, we do tons of calling, tons of emailing, tons of LinkedIn work. Mm -hmm. And honestly, sadly, it took us a long time to realize that there's <laughs> a much easier campaign that was just sitting out there. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just we, we track job changes, mm -hmm. right? So you look at your existing customers, you look at past customers, you look and see who has left and went somewhere else that could buy from you again. And most of the time, these people fall through the cracks and we're yet to find a campaign that outperforms it from a cold perspective. That's wild. And I think you hit the nail on the head with the, um, the notion that it's been there the whole time. And for some reason, people just don't think about it um, or they just haven't come around to like, it's always in the back of someone's mind where they're like, oh, run a past customer campaign. That'll be great. And just the resources to go into it, you never get around to it, stuff falls through the cracks, like you said. So um, definitely interested in seeing sort of the results that you're getting um, and, and sort of helping teams achieve with this shift to sort of the buyer movement campaign that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But most, at least most reps, well, most probably isn't true. A lot of reps will have custom saved searches mm -hmm. within Sales Navigator. And then they can see who's moved in or out the problem there is it's all sitting on LinkedIn, right? right? And so there's never a pulling it off of LinkedIn. And once it falls out of that, it used to be 30 days. Now it's a 90 day window. If your organization doesn't have a systematic way of doing this, pulling it off of LinkedIn and then tracking people coming in and out, it's just, it's the easiest, easiest place to start. For sure. Yeah. James actually wrote a blog for the SD rep team a while back about that concept and how you know, you can execute some of the buyer movement stuff with LinkedIn Sales Nav, and obviously it's a smaller scale and sort of temporary, like you were talking about. So I think that diving into it on a, on a, on a larger level and more than just individual reps executing it on, on their own time uh, will be interesting for people to take a look at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I can jump in and just give some more perspective. I know you're, you know, you're very familiar with this process and you've done it as well. So mm -hmm. obviously, please, please stop me and, and ask any questions. Well, hey, this, but is, no, this is for the audience, not for me. <laughs> um, so once again, outbound view, I mean, we spend all day executing cold outreach, you know, so we are, at least we believe at the forefront of, you know, what's happening and they're just people who are leaving your clients. I think the most interesting thing that we've found throughout this process, so what we do is we find and research all these people, one, and then we build outreach campaigns. Going into this, when we started, we assumed that those people needed to know your organization to be the most likely, meaning they had to have used your tool mm -hmm. at their past empl uh, employer. It's not really the case. Like you just mentioning their past employer uh, starts the conversation, which is really what most inside reps are trying to do anyway, right? So right. it's just, it's, uh, it's been interesting. You can take things by saying, I don't, do you remember working with us? And most of them will come back and say, no. Like, it's not <laughs> like you're tracking down just your buyer or just the person you were speaking with. Because most people that think about this process they're like, well, you know, we only have 30 clients. We only have 50 clients. So what, we're going to track down 75 or 100 people? Like this just isn't sustainable. Right. But if you actually look at the entire addressable market who is employed there and is now in a position that is some, someone that you sell to, then, you know, obviously, uh, obviously that, that market grows quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't, it's not really a surprise, but there's so much job movement right now because of COVID that it's way worse than normal as far as how, how often people are moving. Mm -hmm. You know, we track through buyermovement.com, you know, in July, 2020, companies, a thousand employees and larger, just C-suite in the U S there were 5,000 job changes. Wow. And so it, it, it's crazy, right? And that doesn't even get down to a lot of the decision makers and buyers who are VP level, director mm -hmm. level, uh, or just niche little buyers that are that entry point or conversation. Um, and so just, it reiterates, right? You, you need to have, keep track of these people and where they've, where they've been, where they're going, et cetera. Yeah, I think, I forget where I read the stat, but like the average tenure of someone like a VP of sales, so not even someone that's like a C-level at a huge company, but they're like, you know, expected to be at an organization for 18 months um, around there, and then they just pop off to a new one, do the same thing. So over the course of, what, uh, 36, so three years, they're at three different organizations, more, um, and they have built a program, probably used a couple of different tools and then moved to the next one. And the more people like that, that you can find and sort of take your solution with, uh, as they move jobs, the better. So, I mean, logically, you know, it makes sense. Well, and to your point, because they only have 18 months, they're trying to like, what is the fastest way to more right. revenue? And one of the fastest ways is this versus different cold outreach or things like paid advertising. I mean, there's all different types of things you can do that are a little bit more immediate than how long you and I know it takes to really build an inside sales infrastructure. Yeah. And so Too for long. those of you that, that have an in infrastructure start, like buyer movement should always be the lowest hanging fruit of any outbound campaign, you know, in, in our opinion. Right. Um, th this is really all, all that matters. Like, why should you care? You know, these are the metrics that we see on a regular basis when we run these campaigns straight up against cold campaigns. So as an example, we have uh, cold outsourced uh, clients where we're doing outreach on their behalf and we're running campaigns at people that don't know them. We're running campaigns at people who have moved and it's, it's every client is really similar. Two times the open rates, three times the click rates, three times the meeting rates, and then the really big one, you know, the metric that we really follow at Outbound is how many people move from meeting held to whatever that next stage is in your process. And with the companies that we're doing this for, we're seeing it 5x. So, the, you know, I mean, it's just, it's night and day because that whole trust issue is off the table. Um, so it just, it, it makes it so much easier. Your campaigns are, uh, you know, you're not having a lot of questions about what are you going to do for messaging? It's like, no, we're going to mention their previous employer. Right. Uh, and I'll get into a couple, couple examples there as well. Yeah. You actually, um, mentioned something on your website. I was doing a bit of uh, research before we <laughs> hopped on this call, but, um, something really resonated with me. You said uh, a lot of organizations have entire sales engines focused on setting up cold meetings with accounts that don't know you and a very small amount of them have deals that close. So it's like when you really kind of dig into that, you are like you're talking about with these cold campaigns, building massive sales engines uh, that try to get people who probably aren't in market or interested in your solution, somehow interested in your solution. So um, what do you think the biggest sort of hurdle to getting something like a buyer movement campaign set up is? Like they're sticking to status quo for a reason. Is it effort, education? Um, dive into that a bit. Yep. It's typically the process and the research to set it up is a lot of work, you know? So like I have a case study here that we just went through with a sales trading company to get to the point where we were ready to validate data. It was over 300 hours, it's right? Time. So, uh, and there are some, and that 300 hours, like we have LinkedIn tools to speed this process up. Right. And so other, uh, it's just a lot of work, right? So either to do it at 300 hours, typically you need to hire someone on Upwork or elsewhere. You need to set them up. You need to build all your campaigns. Like it needs to be a priority. And typically when it needs to be a priority, that means other things are going to, going to fall off. And so just the research and work behind setting it up 
and being really detailed behind it and, you know, making it an important campaign or where most people fall, or it'll just take them months and months to, to execute against. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Effort was kind of the first thing that popped up <laughs> in my mind. And then obviously education and just like the idea, like you had brought up before that people just don't think of something like this. Those are yeah. always the two things that are hurdles for any strategy to really work at a sales org. Right. And you know this because you know data well, but even if you get all of those people in Excel, you know, you still have to validate the data and yes. whether you're using sales Intel or zoom info or whoever, you're not going to get a hundred percent. So you end up, this ends up turning to a large data cleansing project at some point. So mm -hmm. that's the second piece where it just takes a while. Um, you know, it, it takes a while not only to find the leads, but then to truly validate the leads and then begin the outreach. It's just, it's, it's a lot of work. For sure. Yeah, no, it definitely looks like something that if I were an SDR, like, like we were talking about on a small scale, sure, every once in a while I can execute something like this, but large scale, like you're biting off a lot. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, so in this sales training example, it was 300 hours. We found 9,200 leads. And just to be clear, sales training is set up better than almost any other industry <laughs> for this. So it's not, oh, you're not always going to get almost 10,000 leads. And they're set up well because the people who go through their programs eventually turn into buyers, you know, and turn into VPs of sales. So there's a little bit of that. But we looked at their existing CRM. So we looked at all of their active clients and who are the people that they had associated. We looked at marketing automation to see who had fallen off. We looked at uh, internal user lists. So their lists of people who'd been through their sales training. And then we did LinkedIn and through all that validation, yeah, it's 9,200 leads, but this, this company had three inside salespeople. Like they can now run this for the next year if they want on their own. Mm -hmm. And they're off and going, right? So they should never do cold outreach for the rest of the year. Or, you know, in this situation, they brought us in to kind of help do some of the outreach as well. But you have 9,200 leads to go after where you pretty much have a warm introduction. Yeah, every salesperson's dream. <laughs> right, I know. Yep, yeah, especially it's just so much easier from an inside sales perspective. Um, how we approach these leads I would love to tell you there's some incredible, you know, messaging template that we put together, but it's, it's fairly simple, right? In the subject line, mention their old employer. You do the normal, saw you were here, now you were here, here's why you should care. Um, and you ask for the meeting. Uh, <laughs> or you ask if they're for the person uh, that runs it. And th that's basically all we do. Um, you know, there's probably some different nuances. The only other real nuance I would say is LinkedIn direct messages work extremely well. So for those people mm -hmm. who you can't get email and phone or in addition to email and phone, connecting with them, sending a similar type of message through LinkedIn works extremely well. Interesting. I feel like I, I'm the kind of person who never responds to those LinkedIn messages, but again, I'm not someone that I would be targeted for a buyer movement campaign anytime soon. So um, it's interesting to see sort of the differences between using email and LinkedIn for stuff like this. I'm sure that you can really dig into some numbers in, in that regard and find out what's successful, what isn't successful, why, with what titles, the yep. world is your oyster. Yeah. Well, you get a much higher connection rate when you put in the connection, saw you were here, now you're here type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then more times than not just connecting with them, they respond without going with additional messaging. Like they'll respond that you've moved and give some type of context. So even the LinkedIn outperforms and is, is at a, a different level. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's across the board. Uh, so we have a full how to guide, which I know we're going to share exactly how they, you can do this on your own step by step. Where do you go? How do you get the data? How do you set up the LinkedIn searches, everything? So we'll include that, but at a high level, you know, if you only want to look at LinkedIn, you need to build a team on Upwork or Fiverr or wherever you go for resources. Um, most of the time, these aren't going to be US-based resources. You need to provide project management over the top and very specific instructions on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, once you get to the point of validating, you fully validate it, 
for us, we're typically looking over the past three years, although we've had clients that want to go back further. And then you're in uh, contact validation mode. And that kind of fits into like the example before where I mentioned it was 300 hours. Like mm -hmm. this is the 300 hours. Right. Um, a couple just quick other things here. Finding the right medium really matters, right? Email has worked best. We've left phone uh, and done voicemails on every single one. This isn't something you just throw into an outreach campaign and move on, like customize it. These are very warm leads. And we recommend trying to connect with every single one of these people on LinkedIn, whether you're going to run campaigns at them or not. Yeah, I think that actually brought up a question that I was about to, to ask you, but sort of like yeah. the level at which you personalize these messages outside of that template that you had shared with us in terms of just like how deep do you really want to go, knowing that obviously they move from X to Y company-wise, um, but like call cadences and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people, I think, when they look at something like this, they're like, great, I've got a template that you shared with me that works perfectly. I've got a list of people. All I have to do is click a couple of buttons, slap them into outreach or sales off or whatever it is and watch leads come in. But realistically, like you just said, that's not the case. Yeah, it depends on the persona. So I'll give you a good example. We're running this with a company who's targeting HR. Most of the people who are leaving their clients are going somewhere in HR, but HR has very different nuances based on the job title and where they're going. So they're a company that sells leadership development training. So if you see that somebody's a director of leadership development, you kind of know that they're in charge of what you do. <laughs> if you see that they move to be a director of HR, you're probably going to want to change the ask to say, you know, I see your director of HR. Is there someone in the leadership group you'd recommend I connect with? Or are you focused on leadership at all any longer? So there are those little nuances that will absolutely help you. But um, you know, it, it really depends on your persona. Uh, just a, a couple more things I mentioned, interesting findings. Once again, these people don't need to know you. Uh, all you have to do is mention their previous employer and mention it as fast as possible. Subject line and first sentence. So don't bury the lead in the, you know, second paragraph. Uh, I know you're, <laughs> you're laughing, but we've, you know, we've seen these where it's like, no, you mentioned at the very end that you knew them, like mention it way up top. And once again, LinkedIn DM campaigns have been, uh, been working really well for us. Yeah. The faster you mention something like that, the, you know, obviously the faster they're going to recognize that this is more of an opportunity for them to have a conversation versus like, if, like you said, at the end of the email, I've given you probably four chances to delete my message by that point. So uh, burying the lead just really kind of grinds my gears when I get prospecting <laughs> emails like that. So I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's tedious. Once you really get into messaging, every email you receive, you like, you know, beat it up and you're like, this is a huge waste of time, but it's, you know, it's just something that you do once you can, you've learned and thought through messaging at kind of the level that, you know, that you have. So um, a couple just quick things that a uh, step-by-step -step guide abonv.com slash buyer hyphen movement. We're also releasing this free LinkedIn tool, which helps with this process uh, nice. quite a bit. And it'll be out sometime over the next couple of weeks. The free LinkedIn tool is you upload your lead list to our tool and we will send you back an email with your lead list that have all of those leads LinkedIn profile in it. Nice. So, so that does just kind of speed everything up for someone who's trying to test this out, execute it on their own and, and sort of determine like, does this have value for me? Yeah, it'll help with that DM process if you've ever searched inside of LinkedIn. Um, or, you know, as you're having your team socially validate lists when you set up Upwork, like them having a specific URL to go to for an individual versus trying to find that individual through LinkedIn, I'll just, it speeds it up quite a bit. Yeah. The amount of times I type in like Matt Smith and there's 30 different people <laughs> that could theoretically be that person saves just that much yep. time. You're like, I don't know what Matt looks like. I'm pretty sure he's in the West Coast somewhere. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll speed the process up for sure. Awesome. Well, this is, I mean, like you said, in terms of use, obviously 
functionality wise and, and sort of how relevant it is to sort of the current environment, something that basically any company should be running if they have an outbound prospecting arm. But um, I really like that you guys have some free tools available for, like I was talking about reps who want to test it on their own, sort of understand like what this process looks like and if it can scale up within their organization. So definitely check these yeah. resources out. Um, highly recommend. I've done buyer movement campaigns on my own just in terms of like small stuff. And it works, like you said, wonders comparatively to cold outreach. So I, I yeah. highly recommend anyone check these out. They, they give it a trial run, really understand whether or not, like I said, this can kind of scale up for them. So um, is there anything else you wanted to direct people to sort of mention as we near the end of this? No, I would say to, to your point, if you're an individual sales, like an inside salesperson, like go find 50 or so of these leads, run campaigns on your own at them. The second you book a meeting, go talk to your boss and say, we should be doing this right across every single one of our clients. But, you know, basically within sales navigator, you can filter it to look at uh, people who are at past, but not current companies. Um, so you just load in your, your customer list and you're off and running. So yeah, absolutely. Give it a try. It's super easy to do. Uh, and, you know, use the guide hopefully to walk you through ex the exact process you should be using. For sure. Um, yeah. And I think uh, because James also wrote that blog for us a little while back, I'll include that in some capacity here as well, because that's like you said, sort of with the guide, sort of a valuable, more tactical step-by-step, -step, like how someone can do what you just said. So for sure. don't want to fly in blind, at least give them some kind of guide to, to help out to start out. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks uh, for talking with me today, Blake. I appreciate it. Um, everyone in the audience, make sure you check out these resources. Go check out Outbound View. They're doing some great work. Um, and then obviously subscribe to, to SD Rev, uh, become a member and join our social communities. We're having a lot of really cool, like this, tactical discussions about how to level up as an SDR and, and be heard in the community. So um, thanks again yeah. for checking us out. And uh, Blake, appreciate the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure, uh, make sure you check out that Slack community. It's uh, one of my favorite communities to get into <laughs> and, and check out. I absolutely no bias from you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks everyone.